What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight, Friday's MLB slate. And uh, before we get into it, I want to say it's been a it's been a miserable week for me DFS wise. Absolutely, just it's not even losing. It's there's a couple of nights where I've I've been clean swept, and that almost never happens to me in baseball, and where I just don't win a single bet. The right. <laughs> really hard to it's, it's it's actually hard to do but i'm not playing as many lineups but at the same time it's just been awful um and going back to some really close calls last week it makes me just longing for those days even so right I'm around tonight and especially since as i told you pre-show um which is i don't want to get all into right here because we, we're going to get to the slate but i i i, I ended up uh, i'm at my family's place and I, I ended up we're sort of out in the san inez valley and uh a bear semi chased me out of the last night at about 11 o'clock <laughs> I, so I feel lucky just to be here right now. I, I'm no like, kidding, right? All night, I couldn't sleep. Um, so I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be playing DFS, happy to be talking with you. And uh, hopefully we can find a way to win some money on this slate. And hopefully the golf stuff uh, picks up for me a little bit. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so Sheets, how was your night? And uh, then we'll jump right into it. Yeah, so that's what happens. You take one, you know, you get, you get, the, you get the early slate, so you don't have to worry about playing. And then you get a bear chasing you down. It's freaking crazy absolutely nuts i ended up having time I, I, time last evening we had a, a site meeting and then we i went i went on a date and i came back from the date and then this is what oh happened. i didn't even realize how'd that go oh it was good it's good we'll um, after. We, we only it was only me evan and, and uh and goldie mostly but it was nice okay. we had a good good conversation and we're gonna uh we're gonna start trying to make it more regular it's just been a little bit of a scattered time over here but okay. we're gonna keep making improvements guys so look out for that and uh yeah so ready to uh ready to jump in whenever you are my friend yep let's do it all right, let's pull up your screen and we'll jump. We'll go game by game here. I think it's a really good slate for what it's worth. Um, I, I I I feel good about a lot of things here, but I'm not I'm, I'm not trusting my own instincts as they've as they've been letting me down, which is going to happen in baseball. You're going to go through little streaks, but feels a little feels like too long since I've had a, a really really nice one, or even even had some nice wins, but didn't really quite have the full sweat. So I would like to get at least a at least a sweat at having a chance to win something big tonight. Yeah, I'm I'm into that. Let me okay. let me find my. Find the thing to share the screen. That's a that's the first bit of variance to overcome here. Yeah. Uh, no wait. Uh, this one and this one. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So. Um, okay. All right. So, while you while you're pulling it up, I'll start it off real quickly with what I think. Uh, the first okay. game I am going to be extremely heavy on, uh, probably as of right now, is my plan. The only thing I don't love is that it's not as hot. We've had some games in the 90s in Washington this season. Only 78 degrees, which, and again, if this game was in L.A., I'd be like, oh, well, that's great, 78 degrees, or even in San Diego, where for one of these, you know. But uh, but overall, I, I have Clevenger currently as my number two overall pitcher on the slate. Uh, I think that you could argue, obviously, you, I'm not going to argue against Rodon and, uh, and, and uh, paying all the way up for Rodon and Scherzer, but I, I really think that Clevenger, I'm not going to hold a bad game against the Dodgers against anybody ever. And before that, he was sort of just back in cruise control mode. You've got a soft lineup. I actually think the total is a little higher than I would have thought for Washington today. Maybe there's a little bit of peskiness in this lineup and all that stuff. I think this is a great spot for Clevenger. I actually think even if he was like 10K, I would be considering him on this slate. So I, I, I like Clevenger and I really want to stack San Diego, but I don't like the slight wind blowing in and only 78. They are one of my teams to, to want to attack today. I think this could be an explosion spot against Corey Abbott and then the you know the the team formerly known as the Nationals bullpen. Um, this team is not a, not a real major league team in my opinion right now. So I, I like both sides. I like both of that. Clevenger with the Padres is a is a good big start for me today. I have um. I have Clevenger rated fourth um uh, today, uh, just above uh, a couple of other guys and significantly below the top three guys who are going to get all the ownership. I believe. And we'll get to those guys a little bit later. Um, I will say that but yesterday I, I took an took a look at the slate in advance just to just kind of see what was, you know, before projections, before anything. And that, that was going to be my original idea was to play uh, was to play Clevenger. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more of that, you know, just to try to like, if, if I have time to just get a, a look at the slate the day before, before I get poisoned by all the numbers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but look, you know, Washington, what since Soto has left and uh, even, even, even before Soto left was, uh, was, was looking pretty grim. Um, yeah. And they're even grimmer. 
And I, I've always had this thing against playing Clevenger for some reason, but but in a spot like this, um, you're gonna have a very chalky guy around this range that that you you know that you might want to pivot off of. And I think Clevenger makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So I do like that. And I have San Diego currently rated fourth or so um in in uh my stack so i consider that firmly in play um as far as their ownership goes um yeah i do have san diego getting owned but not obviously not as much as some you know as as, as a colorado game for openers um so uh, i like san diego i like clevenger i like two of them together and uh i guess i agree with you yeah, it's uh, uh, the only thing I don't like about this club because Clevenger was one of my favorite guys to play when he was with the Indians because he would throw like 125 pitches when they had that staff. But they don't let you do that in San Diego. You don't get to throw over 100 very often. So that's the only thing I would say as a that's sort of holding me back from Clevenger today. And uh, getting over to, I'm just going to take a quick look. I, I did want to, I do want to highlight at the umpire's data that I do have. I don't have anything actually. Never mind. Sorry about that. I don't have anything yet. So I'll try and do that later because it's the weekend series. I forgot it's a new series. So. Next game, uh, Toronto and Cleveland. Um, I'll tell you what, like, I don't care. Uh, one thing that stands out, I'll, I'll do my bets of the day later, but uh, I do want to give a free one out that I think Jose Barrios at at my at three and a half strikeout prop is even against Cleveland is just kind of a little bit insulting. Um, I know he had one, you know, no, he really hasn't. When he pitches deep into games, he he's going to get, you know, he'll have five or six strikeouts here. I, I really think that that's, that's just a really ridiculous number. Um, but I, I think Barrios is a lo- large field, excellent large field play, like really, really good. And I think you could even in some large field stuff, play him with Clevenger. Um, but I don't think that you're going to want to do it in smaller stuff. There is some variance here. Cleveland doesn't strike out a ton. The upside seems a little capped, but Barrios we've seen do it out of weird spots before against teams that, that don't really strike out. I don't really understand. It's hard to sort of hard to sort of track him because he he does have some really good games against teams that you think he would struggle with. And then he sometimes struggles with the teams that you would think he would dominate. Um, I don't think that Toronto is one of my top stacks today, but they're certainly worth mentioning. And I think as a mini stack at their prices, they make sense. Like, and I, and I say their prices meaning just because for them, when they when all their guys are in the four, mid four Ks versus everybody's 5,500 and 6,500 for, for Vlad, they always stand out a little bit to me. And they're going to be very low on. So I think Toronto's viable, but it's a huge slate and not my favorite stack, but I will probably mix in some pieces. How about you? Yeah, I have other other better options than uh, than Toronto, and I have other better options than Barrio. So I don't I don't think I'm gonna get so much of anything in this game. All right, easy one for you. Um well here's one of the other ones. Um this is is this is this why we 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 can't play Barrio sheets? Is it because of Kopec? Well, no, no, no. I, I I'll put it another way. This is this is the guy that that is gonna I thought was gonna be really really chalky, which will allow you to play Clevenger. Um, uh, I think Kopech is gonna be twenty five percent on plus um, in this spot, and I think that whether you play him or not is is uh, is is I think a, a legitimate pivot point. So so I think it's the opposite. I I, I don't think it's you, you you can't play Barrios because you have to play Kopech. I think you could play Barrios because everybody else is playing Kopech. Um, I. Who the hell is Kopech? You know what I mean? Like he's he's got, listen, he's got a name and he's been he's a prospect and everybody loves him, but he hasn't he hasn't struck anybody out. You know, I don't think. Um, he's fortunately got the got a the great matchup and everybody streams against Detroit, and he's going to be really really popular as, as a result. So you know, what, what do you want to do? You going to play Kopech, Kopech and 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 Scherzer and 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 the, and and Coors? I mean, you can't do that. I don't think. And when GPPs. But, you know, I think that you could play Kopech with with Clevenger, as an example, or you could play Kopech with uh, Bar- Barrios, you know, if you want to do that. But listen, against Detroit, it's just a really, really strong matchup. And if you could we can throw the ball over the plate, <laughs> you're, you're playable against Detroit. So uh, I definitely, uh, you know, so I definitely think he is, you know, probably the top point per dollar option and, you know, probably a really strong play in cash. So it's been 10 starts since Kopech has put up 20 fantasy points. Yeah. Um, he's pitched twice against Detroit this year. He's had 10 and 11 fantasy points in those two games. Um, but the ownership gets high here. I mean, I, I don't even know that. It's going to. Uh, he's got a six and a half K prop. That's 
a really high number for a guy at seven. He, he has he takes him like two games to get six and a half usually. It takes <laughs> him like sometimes it takes him like four games. Um, <laughs> he's he hasn't had six and a half strikeouts since like I don't know. It's been like two and a half, no, almost three months. I know it's Detroit. It's a good matchup. Obviously, he's in my player pool, but I mean, it's a those other guys. I, I think Clevenger is the better play, and I think that Barrios at the considering Barrios might be five percent owned and Kopech might be thirty percent owned. I don't know, man. It, it feels like if you're going to decide at that price point, I'm not sure that playing Barrios might not be the worst idea. So that's where I stand on this one. I, I, I do think Kopech. I believe in the future talent and the the long term and all that stuff, but. There's something going on with this guy, and and he his only good game that he's had was at Colorado recently. <laughs> like that's the only time he's pitched well, and even that game, it's not like he struck out four guys. He hasn't. I mean, these uh, strikeout numbers have just been awful. And it, like it's the best matchup, I guess you could ask for for him. But I don't know if we need to do this personally. And then you get the White Sox at home against the lefty, uh, in Daniel Norris, and, and, a, and a bad lefty at that. I think that this is another you know one of those viable spots that I probably end up skipping past today on with the with the slate. I just want to point out there are five guys who are really awesome against lefties who should be in the uh, White Sox lineup if they if they have the Vaughn, Abreu, Jimenez, Robert, and then you, you I don't I shouldn't say five I should say four I guess. But I think that 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 it's a really it's, if Tim Anderson was in, I'd probably be more interested here. But without Tim Anderson, I'm probably not going to be prioritizing the White Sox. But I certainly don't mind if you want to. I'll okay. tell you, it serves me right. You know, yesterday I played the White Sox against the, against what's his name against Granky, and we talked about this. You know, it's 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 like the, the the conversation was. You said, well, they they I really prefer them not really against righty. So I and I said, is Granky even a righty? You know what I mean? He's just going to log them all over the plate. Every but then every time Granky's like still in the league, I wonder why. And then he just he just he's just so frustrating to hit against. Like like the, I had the White Sox, I had the, the like the one two three with all the powerful righties coming up, literally bases loaded, nobody out, and he he just freaking Granky and see something's wrong with him in his head. But he's whatever's wrong with him just allows him to somehow get these guys out when it's just impossible to get them out. You know, if you throw a lob it over the plate, it'll get a pop up. And next thing you know, the freaking <laughs> the inning is over. And the right. White Sox have 13 hits and like zero runs. It's freaking craziness. Um, so I was thinking, okay, next time I'm going to play the White Sox against the lefty. And I don't know, you see, uh, you probably didn't notice this because you didn't look at the slate in advance. But last night when I looked at the slate, you know who was scheduled to pitch for the, for the, uh, for the Tigers? It was yeah. actually Dallas Keuchel. Oh yeah, I didn't even know he was still in the league, much what less on Detroit. And and I'm like, okay, I am just gonna just give me give me all these guys. And now he's not even pitching. So, um, uh, anyway, uh, don't don't we kind of want to do this though? Don't we want to play the White Sox against the lefty? Yeah, it's fine. It's just it's a huge okay. slate, and and they just haven't given us anything to feel really good about, like in a while. Okay. Uh, but it is, but I, but I like the spot. I mean, you do have, for what it's worth, almost 10 miles an hour wind blowing in from center, from left center okay. field. That hurts a little bit. I mean, these are not, these are not make or break numbers in terms of the the stuff. It's just when we get the White Sox at home at 85, to, if it was 85 degrees and you got 10 mile an hour winds blowing out, then I've, but then again, their run total would probably be 5.7 or 5.8 instead of 4.8. Um, they're totally viable to me. I, I just okay. don't think I'm going to prioritize them with some of the other, other uh, lineups. Yeah. I, I, now in fairness, I have them rated. I mean, it's not dialed. I haven't read it. Not that bad. I mean, they're they're right up. They're up, right up along, not quite to some of the other teams we're going to get to, but they're not that far off. I don't know. I'll I'll probably end up spite spite playing them a little bit. I have no problem with it at all. Absolutely no problem with it. I just wish they gave us a little bit more to feel better about. They all. It's like a been a down year for their whole team, and they're probably still going to have a chance because they probably they can still make the playoffs. Um. All right, moving on to Baltimore, Tampa Bay uh kluber and voth and this feels like a cross me off game completely uh that's that's how i have it there we go this is an interesting one you got your yankees and against the uh red sox um okay so where do we stand on the evaldi is is broken thing today just when we thought he was broken he put up a number i know but it's the but it's the yankees and the yankees have been terrible (laughs) so it's really weird to see the Yankees against Ivaldi with uh, only four and a half run total with the way that he's looked in the second half of the season. Although he's put up a couple of nice, a couple of better games, um, looked tr- just awful in those three games before. And and the Yankees were one of the teams that got to him a little bit. 
Uh, I, I feel like I, th- I feel like getting the Yankees at low ownership is something that's always exciting, but they've been really, really bad. And I don't want to be recency biased, so I, I'm still going to keep them in my mix. But as a priority, I mean, the, the way this game, this looks like another game that I might be willing to, to sort of cross off a little bit. Um, these teams tend to put their best foot forward when they play each other. The prices of some of the Red Sox are higher than I want to pay. Um, J.D. Martinez has been just horrible. Um, I know he, no, he didn't do anything. I mean, he's been, he's had eight home runs this season. I don't know what set, you know, seven and 324 plate appearances against uh, righties this year. It's just not exciting to me, this, this game, uh, except for I, I may just to say, okay, F it. I'm going to play Yankee stack against Evaldi, who, while they haven't hit a ton of home runs off of him or anything in the past, they, they faced him a lot. And he, he, his strikeout rate is, sub uh what is it about 15 percent 16 percent um that's enough of a reason to take a shot in the yankees for me but i I don't see anything else and it's not great hitting weather for for boston i mean 72 slight winds blowing in but nothing nothing special here what what are you doing with this game not much i'm having the yankees no better than some of these other teams i I have the yankees no better than toronto i have the yankees no better than white Sox. um probably going to stay away and i have the red Sox below all them so yeah. I'm probably going to just, uh, I'm probably going to be off of this game completely, actually. Yeah, it's one of those games where I could see it get, getting wild, but I just, I don't know. I, I can't quite seem to click that, but click those buttons. Um, All right, we've got Scherzer against Philly. Uh, always scares me for a chalky-ish pitcher, and more than chalky-ish, chalky, the, the chalk pitcher of the slate. But he's the best pitcher on the slate. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that you're playing Scherzer as your top pitcher. Maybe you could argue for Rodon. I think it's actually an interesting conversation, but I uh, I will be playing uh, Scherzer, and I am always a little scared of Philly because they're pesky, but I uh, that's pretty much all I have for this game. Uh, Ranger Suarez has actually turned it around and been good, as I keep saying to people. He's a better pitcher than he's. He's been solid the second half. Um, hasn't given up a ton of power. But, you know, if you wanted to take some Mets bat, I just I wouldn't fault you, but I, not nothing, no reason, I think, to do that on this slate. Yep. So what you um, I, I, I have, I have Kurzer, I, Kurzer. Uh, I have, I have Scherzer as the top. Um, and again, you, you have a slate though, that, you know, how are you going to play this? I, I, I know I'm going to play it. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just going to be stubborn. I'm not going to play Kurzer again. So I, 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 I could probably play Scherzer. Right. Um, I have him as, you know, I have Scherzer and Kopech as the top. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I have Scherzer, Kopech, and Rodon all pretty much in the same glut. So I, I, I wouldn't say for sure that Scherzer's a better play than Rodon. Um, no, I, I don't think it's for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but he's certainly top two. Right? Um, he never has a bad respect- game. <laughs> you know? What? You know, Scherzer just doesn't have bad games, and he's also got immense upside. It's always hard for me when he pitches to not to try and argue for fading when the guy just consistently goes out there and his bad games, he get, puts up 20, which I'm still okay with. Um, and, and I mean, I'm not, I don't want it, but there's plenty of 35s in there for him to, to get also. So just, he's just always good. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I agree. I'm getting, I'm getting Scherzer and, and nothing else. I'm not getting the Suarez. I'm not getting to the Mets. I'm not getting the Philly. All right. Let's move on to Seattle and uh, Texas. Um, well, George Kirby is starting to get a little bit of his, uh, you know, he's been able to throw more pitches, uh, talk about a, a guy who could, who could be an awesome pivot. I think he actually fits the mold for a guy who just is a, no one's going to play in that range. That wouldn't surprise me if he's a top two or three pitcher on the slate, but I probably won't do it. And I'm probably going to stay away from this game. I thought, I don't think Seattle is the worst play in the world here. Um, and they're going to be unowned. And I will say whether or not I play Seattle, you know, my, my, my Mitch Hanniger love. So Mitch Hanniger, when he is below 4k is basically, he's not a lock button because there's no such thing in baseball, but he's my, my initial favorite one off on the slate. And there's some cheap bats in Seattle. There's, there's a way you could, you could mini stack Seattle real cheaply. I think they're kind of interesting as a mini stack. I I, I have no problem playing Kirby. Um, I love it. I mean, I did it. I did it last time, even though he was going to be pitch limited and still get 27 fantasy points. Right. Um, um, it was a different slate. There was only like three valuable pitchers on the slate in that, and that one is, if I recall, um, 
So, I mean, he, he was somebody that I could, I could play with a little bit of confidence. I mean, there's, there are other, I mean, obviously they're better, better players here. I mean, like Scherzer and Rodon are both better, but I don't know. I see, I see worlds where, where Rodon doesn't have the greatest game. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, uh, so I don't know. I, 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 Texas stinks. Kirby's good. I mean, not to reduce it to that, but when, when you're trying to, when you're playing someone really, really low owned, I mean, that really sometimes is all you need to, to justify playing a team, a guy. So I, I think Kirby's totally viable at, at no percent ownership, um, especially if you're going to play some of the chalk you're hitting. Up. So, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 you know, I won't say support it, but I, I will, I'll do it. <laughs> I've, I've played where I've played much worse players. Um, uh, and as far as Shores, I don't even know who that is. I'm not playing him. And I'm, I don't think I'm getting to Seattle, but should we think about that? I mean, who is this Shores yeah. guy? Is he somebody that we could go after? I don't know. I, I don't have them rated high or anything like that, but figured I would ask. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think this is a spot you could definitely go after. Um, but I, again, not a great hitters park. Uh, I'll I have to check on the roof, which I, again, I don't think that they were, sometimes they don't release till later, but it's mostly going to be a, I think what it's going to see, you're going to see is just a bullpen game basically. And stacking as a full slate on a uh, for a bullpen game with with a decent offense. Not not a Seattle is you know this is not the this is not last year or two years ago when Seattle was this horrible offense. They've they've got some they've got some hitters. Um, so I, I have no problem with it. It's just a bullpen game on this slate. With some be- offenses I like better is the only reason I probably don't get to them as a full stack. But as a mini stack, you get a little bit of you get Hanniger, maybe Winker and and J Rod. That takes up your whole outfield, I guess. But um there's some nice there's, and you could play Santana at first at, for 2500 who's sort of had a rejuvenation since joining Seattle um so yeah I could certainly get behind uh a, li- a little Seattle but I don't know if I'm going to, going to go full stack on on this size of slate on the bullpen game all right you ready to talk about the next one yeah um you want to go you, you go ahead first so this is another one uh, as usual uh, because you're used to this by now, I'm not going to have Luis Garcia projection until later in the afternoon, just because it requires a little bit of name massaging. Because Luis Garcia is uh, playing shortstop, I think for the for the Nationals. Uh, so yeah. it's uh, I want to make sure to not give. Uh, I think there might even be one more actually. Who there is another be. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure I don't give uh, Luis Garcia the shortstop a a you know twenty point uh, projection. Um, and uh, I, but. It isn't isn't Luis Garcia a legitimate pivot off of all this stuff? I mean, how how yeah. how much worse is Oakland? How much better is Oakland than any of these other teams? You know, so I think that Luis Garcia, I don't know what his projection is going to be, but it's probably going to be okay. Um, so I think he's pretty legitimate um, as far as a pivot off of these other guys. But I mean, what what's very clear is that Houston is a legitimate pivot off of off of off of Coors, if not even more likely to get there than Coors. I don't know. Um, Potentially even as popular, by the way. Well, that's the other thing. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing Houston. Um, no, I don't have them as popular as Coors, but but I definitely have them as the most popular non-Coors stack. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think they're very viable. They're very reasonable and. I kind of prefer to do other things. I probably go would prefer to pivot off the pivot, and we'll talk about that um, when we summarize. But I definitely think Houston's, you know, they only have almost have a six run total themselves, you know. So this is yeah. uh, it's a very, very, and they're at home. So they're obviously very playable. So Luis Garcia with Houston certainly makes sense. I don't know what the run, I don't know what the, what the, what the, the line is on this. I would imagine it's over minus 200. Um, yeah. And I would probably recommend, as I've been doing with these kind of like big situations like that, I would I would probably just lay the one and a half runs. You know, what what that's probably about a pick them. I would imagine. Um, they're minus. Just, they're, they're, I don't think there's a pick them. I, I think they're minus three forty three. So I think it's even like this is a, a drastic fit. You don't see. I mean, this is a pretty. Big oh, they're three forty three on the money line. Yeah. So they're going to be probably like minus one sixty uh, yeah. with the with the one and a half, yeah. But I don't know. I I seems like see, as as listen, I've been like pretty right about these in the in the over the season. So I'm going to give it the same line again. It's like feels like a ten nothing game to me. Um, and it's, I've been pretty good about those ten nothing games. It's true. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'm going to give that out again. I'm going to say Houston minus the one and a half runs and and uh, just Garcia Houston. Just you know, it makes it all makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and they faced this guy twice already, and they got to him both times. Um, 
I, I do like Houston for what it's worth. Uh, where they end up fitting in, we'll figure out by the end of the show. But uh, as of right now, I have them behind the pod raises, my two favorite stacks so far that we've talked about. And I'm curious to see how the lineup shakes out. I would like to get uh, my man Mancini back in there. I don't know if that's going to happen today. And uh, if you want it, but then you, you know, you get the cheap McCormick that sort of evens out your stack. And if you could use, if you want to use Guriel then to go with Tucker, Altuve and Alvarez, maybe Bregman instead of one of those guys, I think it's certainly really viable. So I, I, uh, I do like Houston quite a bit for what it's worth. Um, and I am probably not going to use Garcia because the price is a little too close to the guys I like a little bit better. Um, and Garcia has had a couple of, you know, he's had some, some other, he hasn't really put up a, a big number in a, in a while. And the, those other guys were, our Garcia has, you know, he has good strikeout stuff, but he tends to get himself into some trouble. Um, and just sort of squeak through those six innings and get that 15 to 20. I want guys who are going to be getting me thirties. It is a good matchup, um, obviously against Oakland, but I, I probably have Garcia a little bit on the outside looking in along with Kirby right now. But I think Kirby is a, uh, I like Kirby, that Kirby is going to be probably one third, if may not more the ownership of, well, they're both going to be low on either way. Um, Yeah. So I, I, I think Garcia is, is totally fine. I just am not, I'm not like overly excited about it. Uh, Yeah. It's, I, I'm looking at different projections. So it's, I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth. Like you've got him a little lower than, uh, than Saber Sim, but you've also got him. Who? Uh, uh, Kir- uh, what's his name? Uh, Garcia. I don't even have Garcia projected. I have, I have. Him oh, on. my fault. My fault. You're right. You're I just right. have a shortstop project. I don't even have a pitching projection for him. Well, I'm looking at the wrong. I told thing. you, I got, I got, I got to do that differently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this game, you know, it's it's mostly just going to be about Houston for me. Anything, anything else to, to add sheets to that one? No, mo- moving on to the next pivot. <laughs> moving on to the Dodgers, right? I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Lynch, Lynch is not terrible. Um, and solid. Uh, so it's not exactly the easiest matchup, but, um, and he's a lefty and I prefer to play Dodgers against righties. Yep. So makes it a little harder. I mean, the Dodgers are always in play. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll give this one a pass. Um, they, they certainly are, are, seem like a, like a reasonable way to go. If you don't want to play Coors, you play Houston, you play the Dodgers, your top two options, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, uh. I, listen, if I get to them, I'll get to them. But it doesn't seem like the typical type of Dodger situation I like to play. I usually like to play them either against really bad pitchers or against righties. Um, and that could be a mistake, but that's 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 where I've been been doing it. Yeah, I think, and, and, and you know, it's worth it's worth looking at some of the numbers because this is a spot where it's 88 degrees in in KC. It's an upgrade for the Dodgers in that sense. And you have, you know, even with the Dodgers, we say you know the struggles against lefties. They they have had some. They do have a couple of guys who who hit lefties really well. I'm sure. Well, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> I mean, well, Trey Turner being one of the one of the premium ones, and uh, Will Smith, Mookie Betts, all these guys I think are are really good plays on their in their own right. I don't like what the Dodgers necessarily do. I mean, it's fine for real life baseball. I don't like it for DFS. But when you have guys down at the bottom of the order, like in Trace Thompson, Austin Barnes, and Hanser Alberto, could easily all not be in for more than a couple at bats. Um, and those are the cheap options. So it's just, it's a little, and yeah, you don't get the Muncie and, uh, and Bellinger most likely, although you might get them today. Um, so I, I I'm on board with the Dodgers, but I don't, it's not a priority stack for me by any means. Yeah. But again, they, I always feel nervous to say that cause they can win every slate. Um, uh, I, I, this next game is interesting because mostly because Jordan Montgomery is 6,800 um i i yeah i don't know what to say about this exactly because it is too cheap he's not a guy i like rostering in dfs in general milwaukee is a does strike out is a little bit of a boom bust offense they have a really low run total today uh 3.3 uh montgomery at 6800 is certainly in the mix but i don't know if i'm going to be able to do it he's i mean 6800 five and a half k prop that's very high uh, I think he's interesting, but I don't know how excited I am to play Montgomery on a big slate. That's where I stand. Yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting him as a pretty decent point per dollar play. Um, but like you said, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe it's not bad. You know, I mean, when you were dealing with Kopech, who's going to be 30% owned, 
um, maybe, maybe it's not the worst idea in the world to like play a similar construction, um, but just replace uh, Kopech with 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 Montgomery in case in case he loses. You know what I mean? Like in case yeah. Kopech has like a bad game, which he could. Um, then maybe you don't need a whole lot of upside out of out of Montgomery. You know? Yeah, know. it's it's, it's it seems like a bad idea, um, but. I, I think it's I, I don't know I think it's pretty reasonable I think it's one of those where I'm not going to probably play my big lineup, but I'll probably like, I'd rather play something like Barrios like you were you were mentioning. Yeah, than, like uh, yeah, Barrios at least can go out there occasionally and have that weird ten fifty. Yeah, fifty. Yeah, exactly. Game, where it's just Montgomery just never does that. <laughs> like, um, and, what, do and you think, what do you think? What do you think about the hitting? What do you think of the Cardinals or Milwaukee or Lauer or anything like that? On a smaller slate, I would I would take a chance and trying to attack Lauer here, um, but. He's overall a good enough pitcher for me to probably just stay away, uh, even though it is a lefty against, you know, we like we like to play St. Louis against lefties. Um, and I, you know, if you if you want to do that on this side, it's fine. They're 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 really expensive. They still have the Coors pricing for some of them, which is weird because, well, actually, most of them are more expensive than they were at Coors. So that's just weird. Um, I don't know what DraftKings is doing this year. What's going on with the algorithm? But I, I think I stay away from the hitting in this game personally. Uh, I definitely will. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we get a an Arizona Colorado game where I actually, you know, again, I it, it's not this is not for ownership reasons. If I have to play one side of this, I'm playing Colorado. Um, I don't have. I I mention it every time he pitches, and it's not that I think Senzatella is some some ace or anything like that, but he just doesn't get crushed. <laughs> um, and I mean, you look at, and he's, and he's going, you know, he's going deeper into these games and every game is between what, two and four runs, basically he's giving up. Sorry um, about that. I don't know what's going no, on. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so I, I, look, I have no problem with either side of this game as they'll just, you know, could they both go off? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I would rather try to pick on Zach Davies a little bit than I would Senzatella, uh, especially in Coors. And I think that is what I would do if I am going to play this game. I have Colorado as one of the stacks that I like, uh, and I don't expect them to be crazy owned. The only thing is when you look at their lineup, it's like, okay, so you got Blackman and, and McMahon as the lefties, which is what you'd want, you know, want in general against the righty. Davies a little bit reverse splitsy when it comes to power. So, you know, maybe you could throw Montero in there as a cheap option to go with uh, Crone and Rogers and Blackman and McMahon. I, I do think that they're very viable, the the Rockies today, but I have them higher than, than Arizona. And I don't have, I, I don't think that they're going, I don't think that you have to worry as much about ownership if you want to just play whatever stacks you want today. I think it's going to be more spread out. Uh, I don't have any hitter in this game above, any, any hitter in the slate for that matter, that's going to maybe they end up, the highest guy ends up around 20%. But I think mostly we're talking about 15, 10 to 15% on most of the hitters in this game. And that's something I don't mind stacking, but I don't think I need to go out of my way to do it either. Yeah, for me, I mean, I do have them both. I mean, as they're just always good. The Coors games are always going to be rated the highest. Um, and they are rated the highest, but not by a lot. Um, I don't have them rated that much better than Houston or even, or even I think the Dodgers. I mean, I, it's, it's, um it's not the, uh, and I still have them as, I still have them being the highest owned. Um, well, although not by the same amount as they usually are. Um, I still think that I'm going to probably fade them. Um, and I, I have no, actually, I'm a little different. I don't have much of an opinion between the two teams. I think they're all, they're both pretty similar to me as far as profile and as far as ownership is go, goes. So I'll probably end up fading them in my big buy-in and going to something else. Um, but they're certainly rate to be really, really, you know, re really good plays as, as teams always are where they're in, uh, in Colorado. But your, your point is very well taken about Sensatella. You know, he's um, he's uh, one of those guys, man. He's one of those course pitchers who knows how to pitch and he knows how to limit the damage. And it's listen, it's very frustrating to try to play chalky stacks against guys like that. It just really mm -hmm. is. I just went on a not that he's exactly the same. But I just I just spoke for five minutes about how frustrating it be could be to attack Ranky. You know, it's it's just just because the guy's not like some incredible pitcher to strike everybody out doesn't mean he can't suit the role that he's been designed to, to perform and, 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 and Granky's role nowadays is not to strike out 10 guys. It's to eat up innings and eat up pitches and, 
and and give up three four three runs, you know, or something like that, mm -hmm. and, and and not give up ten. And ten sends a tell. I say, listen, you know, we're going to give you a contract to pitch. Half your game is going to be pitching at Coors Field. You know, we're not expecting you to win the Cy Young. Just you know, get get me five innings, get mm -hmm. me maybe six, give up four runs, or you're fine. You know, and mm -hmm. when you're when you're playing DFS and you want like ten like ten runs. Right, it's just it's going to be very frustrating against guys who's deliberately like been told. I mean, that just your your job is not to shut teams down completely or give up twelve runs. Your job is to just limit damage, and it's uh it's tough to play against guys like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The only thing I would poke back on is a little bit. I bet you by the end of the day, you'll see that Arizona gets significantly higher ownership just because of the pricing. Um, Colorado is is a lot more expensive. They're both they both have cheap options, but. They they did the same thing where they didn't raise anybody's price from Arizona in when they went to Coors. So and it's 91 degrees again in in Colorado when it's that hot. It's you got two contact pitchers who don't you know don't strike a guy a bunch of guys out. Feels like there's going to be home runs in this game. Um, the question is just how many and is it the right thing to do? You know, given the ownership, I think the ownership is going to be a little bit lower than usual. But I still think it's uh, I, I think we should, I, I think that like I will have pieces of it, but I'm probably not going to be fully stacking. I might, I might consider a full Colorado stack. Um, that's pretty much where I stand. Yeah, that's what happened to me in the, in the slate yesterday. It was, I was doing all right. Then, then uh, the Colorado game exploded on me, you know, like late yep. in the game, which is, uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Yep. I hear you. Um, all right. Uh, Minnesota and LA. I think Tyler Molly is getting way overlooked. I think he's going to have some ownership, but I think he should be higher. I think this is a tremendous upside matchup. I'm very surprised to see the angels with a run total above three and it points at the 3.75. I would have thought it would be like a little lower today. Um, the angels, I mean, so many times we've watched them lately, they just look completely inept and I have no problem making Molly one of my main five pitchers, uh, maybe six, I guess not five, I guess. I think Molly is, probably right there with those other guys and and with the ownership. And by the way, with, with Molly, what you get is he has the upside to strikeout wise to, to go out there and win you a slate. Like he has those 10 strikeout games. He has the, he has the stuff. Um, he's also hasn't faced these guys. I, I don't believe ever before uh, if I'm not mistaken. And I love, I always love when that happens. And I think that, you know, you get a good pitcher's umpire in this game. I could, I could end up seeing myself with Molly being one of my, maybe my one of my top guys by the end of the slate. Um, if I was playing like two lineups, my initial thought would be probably to try to either a, a Kopech, uh, Clevenger or one of those guys with Molly and then a Rodon and Scherzer together. Cause you know, I love to put them in the same place. Um, and, uh, and I'm not particularly interested in the offense. Uh, I think Sandoval is a better pitcher. I always say this, he's a better pitcher than people give him credit for, but Byron Buxton at 5.2 against the lefty is always going to pique my interest. So that's pretty much all I have from this one. Yeah, I like Molly a lot here. I mean, I don't have this. It might, you know, I have I have the the Rodon, Scherzer, Kopech as the, the top three that are going to get all the ownership as well. But I, I certainly have Molly just right alongside of Clevenger, Montgomery. You know what I mean? As as legit SP twos. If you don't want to, you know, go the Kopech route. So I totally agree. I mean, the Angels are just are no better than any of these teams we're streaming against. You know, they're no better than Texas. There's no they're no better than Detroit. You know, so who's to say that? Uh, and like you said, you know, Molly has, has put up some games from time to time, you know, so so if he gets it rolling. His, his issue for me, like when I play him, is that is that is that he, he he goes deep into counts a little too much. Like next thing you know, he'll be like three and oh, like maybe only when I'm playing him, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, you're um, right about that. I, I agree with that. But but whatever. I mean, uh, against against the Angels at that price, I'll I'll take a shot. I, I like it a lot, actually. What do you think of um? I always ask this. What What do you think of Sandoval? I think he's I think he's fine. I don't think I need to go there. I, I like the other guys a little bit better in his range, but I could certainly argue for it because these guys outside. I mean, this is to be the, the the lefty crushing team, and and Brian Dozier and and Miguel Sano are not are not playing. You know what I mean? So uh, the one who does that, there's two guys who do stand out. I just want to point out one home run per ten at bats against lefties this season for Buxton. One home run per. 11 at bats or 12, 12 at bats for Miranda. Uh, those two guys stand out to me as really interesting one, like not, well, I guess maybe just make it a two man. I got, maybe I just build my, my stack and then I have Hanager Buxton and Miranda together. But I think all three of those guys are, are really, really legitimate uh, 
solid individual plays, which I, I think we, I like talking about more rather than just stacks. So I want to keep focusing on saying my favorite uh, one-offs here. Um, okay. Sheets. Uh, what do you talk about Rodon? Talk about this game and, and where we stick. We think about Rodon versus uh, Scherzer. I mean, I think you can't, I mean, not to say it this way, but I think you can't go wrong with either of them. And I really have no opinion. You know, I, I think they're, I think they're both the same. Not that, actually, I shouldn't say that. I, I have them rated both the same. Um, one, one thing that I would say is that I, I, I like the San Francisco offense more than the, uh, the Mets offense today, um, which, which makes, you know, it doesn't really mean that much because both both guys rate to get the win, so it's not as if the correlation is that big of a deal. Um, they they're both probably big favorites here, um, but I, I think Rodon is a really really great option. I don't know what else to say. Um, and and as I just alluded to, I think San Francisco is one of one of the the, the cooler little pivots here, uh, at mm-hmm. least for me. Um, I have them rated. It was really, really strong from a value perspective. Um, yes, I got. I guess get, get some cheapos here. I, I, La Stella, maybe. I, I I don't know what these prices are, but I have Gonzalez, La Stella, Crawford, Belt, and JD Davis is like the five kind of like mm-hmm. kind of upside value plays there. So you know, I well, Lamont I'll, and Wade I'll, might I'll be there at two point six. You might get your Stremski at two point eight. Right, um, right. You've got Crawford at two K. I, I absolutely am on board with San Francisco here. Just not even just from a price point. It's 63 degrees sheets, which is like a fire. I mean, it's like 63 it's degrees. Not it's not like as hot a, as it gets in San Francisco. It's like, it's, it's a, uh, they're going to be melting on the mound there. What the hell? Yeah, I know. It's like, they don't even know what to do with themselves at 63 degrees. Um, oh God. I, I can't, I love the stadium, but I, I, I just cannot believe that we, that I don't, why do people, I, I love San Francisco. It's a beautiful city, beautiful, beautiful city, but I cannot understand why people choose to live in California and have to deal with this cold weather all the time. Um, but I, I, I like the San Francisco stack. I, I think that belt, like you said, belt, uh, belt, Peterson, Wade, if he's in the lineup, Tommy Listella, Brandon, they're just super cheap. And some of these guys are platoonable. Some of them are probably not going to be platoon. And if they get off to a huge lead or something, you don't have to worry about that so much. So really weird to, to recommend San Francisco on a, on a, on a full slate for me. But they are, I have them right now as my fourth favorite stack. Uh, that's subject to change, of course, but I think that they're right there with a lot of these other teams that uh, that I like quite a bit. So I I like that. I mean, I, I think that, and, I, and again, I have Rodon just a little behind Scherzer. If I had to pick one of them, it'd be Scherzer, but I am completely fine with Rodon. Let's say I play one big lineup on FanDuel, one big lineup on, on DraftKings. I'd probably put Scherzer in, in the one on FanDuel as a single pitcher. And I'd probably put Rodon with one of these, other guys who I mentioned as a secondary pitcher and my favorite right now being Clevenger followed, followed by Male and Kopech. Um, and my favorite stacks, Padres, Rockies, Astros, C- Giants. And then I like the mini stacks from Seattle and Toronto with the, uh, I'm going to absolutely have to play one full Dodgers stack. That's my notes for today. And my favorite one-offs, Hanager, Buxton, Miranda, and then basically all of San Francisco, especially Brandon Belt. San Francisco, San Diego, Houston, um, they all look good. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going, again, this is totally meaningless, right? Because the slate does not lock in five minutes, but, but slate locks in five minutes. And if I get the, the, the lineup I want, given the ownerships, I would be between the following two teams for leverage. And that would be the White Sox mm-hmm. and the team that you mentioned more of a mini stack, but because I'm, um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just got the OCD five man thing. Yep. I would probably take a shot with the Seattle full, full five minutes. Mm-hmm. I like both. Uh, of them. I mean, I, I do like the White Sox for what it's worth. And, I, and I'm going to do a little bit of digging and see if I can find anything else that, that leads me to, to want to play them on it. It just, I just hate playing the offenses that are totally underperforming on huge. I know. I know. At the same time, like San Diego has been underperforming too, for the most part. And, uh, you know, I, I like them a lot. So it's, it's, that's what I like about this slate is there's a lot of different routes. There's a lot of different decisions to make and uh, the ownership is going to be spread out. So we can kind of do most of what we want. The, the, the one thing that really does stand out to me is this Tyler Molly thing. Like I, I just keep getting back to like, mm-hmm. wouldn't, he, wouldn't he be like, if he was 7,500, wouldn't he be like 40% owned against the angels? 
why is the Angels run total this high? And I don't know. I just feel like that's a guy who could win you a slate as, as a or, or be the best pitcher on the slate. And he's significantly cheaper. He has a, a six and a half K prop. But we do have two awesome studs at the top, and it would be very, very easy to just get them both in if you wanted to play a team like San Francisco, especially. Ooh, I have, a, I have a. I was about to say I have a feature request for, um, for DraftKings. What's that? But then I decided that I want to talk to you about this offline and see okay. if maybe Evan can actually create this. Okay. Um. So we're gonna let's we'll we'll stop recording. Okay. Um. And uh, to tonight, I am. I think I'm out because I have a barbecue yeah. tonight. All right, well, I will be here all day and all night, so uh, I got it covered. But uh, all right, we'll talk about it off air, guys. Good luck tonight. Somebody take something <laughs> down. We want to see it at the top of the leaderboards. We want to see the screenshots in Discord. We, I know some people have been hitting it pretty good lately, so let's keep it going for for those who are, and then for those of us who have been struggling, it's time to turn it around. Let's have a good uh, true DFS day. Hey, what, what, what was the one? What was the joke that the, the two guys that were camping and and a bear was like? Uh, was they heard a bear like coming after them and the guy said i don't know do you think we can outrun the bear he's like i don't know all i got to do is outrun you yeah <laughs> unfortunately i was alone last night when i was I know. I know i know was, i had nobody else to throw at him that's right no one to throw to the wolves so to speak <laughs> yeah um so I, I, it's okay. a good day for me no matter what surviving yeah. a, a a bear encounter in a totally strange circumstances is a uh, I'm I'm just already feeling lucky. So. Oh, by the way, let's let it run. Yeah, for just a couple of seconds. Have, have you are you up to date with Better Call Saul? No, I need it. That's that's my that's my when I when I have a full day, I'm gonna just binge. binge it's literally, home. you know, people say this all the time. I, I'll, I'll put it to you another way. There's probably better television, but I just can't imagine what it is right now. I mean, it's right. so good. It's it just is. so good. I love the show, and I heard it's, it's got just, better this it's year. It's just so good. But you here's but, but only because you mentioned getting chased by a bear. I want to recommend something else, which is a little offbeat and it's a little different. But there's a show called The Bear. Mm-hmm. Um, it I heard stars the guy really from good. Shameless who who uh, who is lip on Shameless. Yeah, it's it just kind of it's about a, a kind of it's a guy who used to work as, as a head chef at French Laundry who kind of had to like go take over like this kind of like greasy greasy spoon or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it's it just. It flows differently than like most television. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's really, really neat. Um, and I, I definitely recommend it. I appreciate it. I'm, I've, I, I have some shows I need to I need to check out new ones. So I, I have Better Call Saul and I definitely have the bear on my list as well. Yep. All, All right. right. Well, good luck to everybody. And Hang on uh, there after you stop recording. Yep. We'll see you guys uh, in Discord.